Hey, hey, welcome to Sketchy EVM. My name is Anthony Crocco, and today we're talking about surgical safety data reports. It may have occurred to you at some point in your career to ask the question, are you any good at what you do? Are you great at your job? Two obvious questions come out of this. The first is, what does great mean? The second is, how do we even know if we are great? One of the best answers I've heard to the first question comes from the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. They say that great quality care should be safe, timely, effective, efficient, equitable, and patient-centered. It's hard to disagree with that. Answering the second question is a little bit harder. I think you'll agree that for us to know whether or not we're great, we're going to need some information or data. And we're going to need more than just our own data about our own care. We're also going to need the data from other people's care so that we can compare ourselves to our peers. Your data will be most valuable if we have a large comparison group. Additionally, it's important that the data are adjusted for differences between patients. This is called a risk-adjusted database and helps account for differences like pre-morbid conditions in your surgical patients. So let's have a look at how all of this safety data is going to be presented to you. You're going to get a graph that looks something like this. Now I can tell you that my first reaction when I saw a surgical safety data report was, oh my goodness, there's a ton of information here. First of all, there's some easy stuff to go through. The very top line is a good place to start. This is where we see what surgeries or surgical groups are being examined, the date range that we're looking at, and the reporting site. The bottom line just tells you which safety outcomes we're looking at. Some of the elements on this graph that require a little bit more explanation include the odds ratio, seen here on the y-axis, the gray boxes, which we call centile boxes, the vertical lines with a dot in the middle, which actually represent your data, some colored alphanumeric notations at the bottom, as well as some numbers at the top that are labeled hospital odds ratios. There's a lot to take in all at once, so I think it's worth looking at each of these elements in turn. First, let's try and understand what odds ratios are. To do that, we need to first understand the difference between probability and odds. Let's talk first about flipping a coin. If we think about the probability of getting heads when we flip a coin, we'd all agree that the probability is 50%. Probability is calculated by taking the event rate, in this case 1, for heads, and divide it by the total events, which is 2, heads and tails. 1 over 2 equals 50%. When we calculate odds, we take the event rate, in this case 1, heads, and divide it by the non-event rate, which is 1 for tails. 1 divided by 1 is 1. The odds of getting heads when you flip a coin is 1. When we calculate odds ratio, all we're doing is taking the odds of something happening in one group and dividing it by the odds of something happening in another group. Let's say, for example, we were interested in surgical site infections. If your rate of surgical site infections was 3%, for every 3 patients with a surgical site infection, there would be 97 patients without, making your odds of surgical site infections 0.031. Now let's imagine that your peer group that you're being compared to has a surgical site infection rate of 4%. For every 4 patients with a surgical site infection, there are 96 patients without, making their odds of getting a surgical site infection 0.042. To calculate the odds ratio, all we do is take your odds of a surgical infection and divide that by the odds of a surgical infection in your comparison group, giving us a value of 0.74. Now just in case you're not a clinical epidemiology nerd, I want to make this really easy. If the odds ratio is 1, the risk of harm to your patients is the same as your comparison group. If the odds ratio is less than 1, it means that your patients are less likely to experience harm, and that's a good thing. And if the odds ratio is greater than 1, it means that your patients are more likely to experience harm compared to your peers. Now if we go back to the original report, you'll see that the odds ratio are listed on the left-hand side. And there's a horizontal line that goes across the graph where the odds ratio is 1. Remember that less than 1 is good, more than 1 is bad. Let's move on now to talk about the centile boxes. For every safety outcome that's listed on the report, you'll notice that there's a vertical box divided into 10 segments. This is the centile box and contains the risk-adjusted data from over 100 different sites, with the highest 10% or worst performers at the top and the lowest 10% best performers at the bottom. Going back to the report, you'll see that there's a centile box for every metric that's listed. The next element we need to look at are these vertical lines with dots in the middle. These represent your data. Your data are presented as a vertical line with a dot in the middle. The dot represents the point estimate for your data, and the vertical line represents the extremes of a confidence interval around that point estimate. You'll also notice that your data are presented in one of three colors. If your data are written in green, good news, you're providing exemplary care with regards to that metric. If your data are in red, unfortunately that's bad news and means that this is an area that needs improvement. 
If your data are in black, then you are as expected similar to your peers, which is not to say that you can't improve. Now if we go back to the original report, you'll see that our data for all morbidity are in green. And up at the top, the point estimate for the odds ratio is 0.69. Remember, low is good. At the bottom, you'll see L1, meaning low risk and that your point estimate is in the first centile. If we now look at our data for all UTIs, you'll see that our data are in red, with an estimated odds ratio of 1.9. Remember, more than one is bad. As well, you'll see that our point estimate is in the 10th centile, which is bad. Lastly, if we look at all pneumonia, you'll see that our results are in black, which means as expected or similar to our comparison group. The odds ratio for our point estimate is 0.79, and our point estimate is in the second centile. This highlights that just because our results are in black doesn't mean that we don't have room for improvement. Let's now go through a quick example. Let's imagine you were wondering how your patients were faring with C. diff infections. Well, we're first going to have to grab our trusty surgical safety data report. Next, we want to have a look at the top to make sure that in fact the identifiers for this chart pertain to us, the date range we're interested in, and our site. Then we need to have a look at the bottom to find the outcome measure we're looking for, in this case C. difficile infections. You can see that our data for this outcome measure are green, which is a good sign, that our point estimate for our odds ratio is 0.48, which is good, and that our point estimate is in the first centile, which is also good. So at the end of the day, I think there's three things worth remembering. The first is, we need data to improve our care. Secondly, our goal with all of this is zero harm. Even when we're doing well, we can probably do better. And lastly, surgical safety data reports appear to be really complex, but when you break them down, they're quite digestible. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Sketchy EBM. Please take the time to evaluate, and as always, remember to draw your own conclusions. Music